His presence is good. Amen. Our, uh, our, I don't actually think we can do better than that. His presence is good. Amen. Our, uh, our president has, has uh, made today a national day of prayer, and uh, we just, and we're the church. We come together, and one of the most powerful things we can do is pray. We worship and we pray, and uh, you know, prayer isn't just uh, just a response. It's not just a do that. It's not just a thing we do before we eat. Prayer is our this privilege to stand in the gap, and uh, you know, Jesus when he was teaching about prayer, some. The whole thing's powerful because it's Jesus, right? But he says, he says that we can declare what's in heaven to happen in the earth. Let your let let what's in heaven happen in the earth, and that's what I, I want us to just take a moment and uh, in in light of fear, in light of a real virus, and what can be uh, threatening, a lot more threatening to some than others. But is right now, it's just it's got the world kind of flipped upside down and, and a lot of confusion and stuff. And Jesus is always the answer. Remember when you went to children's church and you go, what'd you learn about today? Jesus. Jesus is the answer. And uh, he is moving. And well, and as Christians, we don't pray and stand in the gap. We're not trying to get God to do something. We are fighting from a place of victory. We pray from a place of victory. And, uh, and then we send the word. So a lot of times when I, I pray, it's not, Lord, will you do this? We are declaring what he wants to do already. And we're on the right side. We're winners. We're not victims. We're victorious because he's already overcame the world. And so I just want to encourage you. It's not this, oh, Lord, oh, no, 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 no. It's, Lord, thank you that you are having your way. You are moving. And uh, what I thought about is as we pray this morning, think about it. You know, maybe you haven't, but... Um, it's kind of hard to miss, but if you see the news and how states light up and the country lights up and all the different countries light up as this virus is spreading, what if, what if today something switched and as the people of God stood in prayer, all of a sudden we saw it eradicated. We saw it go the other way. You know, our God does that kind of thing. In nations, we were promised nations would turn in a day. And what an opportunity. We believe this could be the finest hour of the church and the local church to stand in the gap and to pray together. And so let's pray. Let's pray. Let's join together. And I want to encourage you. You can maybe kneel down where you're at. You can sit down if you want to come to the altar. But let's just position our hearts and just go to prayer. And uh, let's declare God's best for our world and for our city. Father, we just come right now. And Lord, we come humbly. But Lord, we also come boldly because you said that we could. And Lord, we, we just rent, we rend the heavens that this morning. We join with others all across this nation and all of those around the world. And we declare, Lord, let heaven come to earth. Let, let the name of Jesus be glorified and exalted. And we thank you that every uh, coronavirus, that every sickness, that every disease has to bow its knee to the name of Jesus. It has to respond. There's no other way, but it is under the name of Jesus. And so we declare wholeness. We send the word of healing and Lord we just declare that God you are moving and Lord your name is being made famous all throughout not just our city but all throughout every region and Lord we just come against the spirit of fear we come against the spirit of anxiety and, and uncertainty and Lord we just declare peace and wholeness uh, not just in answers but in Jesus that people would find hope in you that, that the hopelessness that's become contagious we just declare that hope is contagious even more contagious and that it is spreading even now through the church and through the body of Christ all around the, gro the globe and Lord we, play, we pray specifically for those that are, that are at risk and those that are susceptible to sickness. And we just thank you for a hedge of protection around them. We thank you that they find uh, completeness and protection under the shelter of the Most High. And Lord, we thank you for surrounding them with people to care, to provide needs. Thank you that you're awakening our hearts to be hope, to be the church, to be light in dark places, to be the answer that we know in our hearts is so true. And so Lord, we just right now take the moment to tune into heaven and we position ourselves for heaven to come to earth and we declare that you will have your way that you have the final word disease and sickness doesn't have the final word we shout the name of Jesus come on just begin to shout the name of Jesus we declare Jesus reigns 
in this house and in every house in our city and throughout the globe. And God, we thank you. We thank you for what you're, what you're doing, how you're using the church. Lord, we pray right now for officials and our leaders and our elected officials. And we, God, we just thank you that they have on them a spirit of wisdom, not a spirit of fear, not a spirit of chaos, but of order, of knowledge and wisdom that comes from on high. And Lord, we just thank you that every step is directed and ordained by the Lord. And Father, we as your people, we put our trust and our hope in you. And Lord, we ask for the harvest right now. Those that are, that are not, just, uh, not just uncertain or maybe afraid, but God, those that don't know you, those that haven't seen the light, we just declare to them, arise and shine for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Look up and be aware that you find your hope and your strength in the Lord. And God, I pray for Christians everywhere that they remember that it awakens inside of them that we lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Jesus, you're still the healer. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you choose to use your church. Oh, we are nothing without you. But you choose to use the local church. You choose to use believers. And so Lord, I thank you for kids that are full of hope. I pray for the elderly that are full of hope. And God, I thank you that where we have positioned to be the answer, use us, God. Take us, awaken us. We stir up the faith that's inside of us. We see this as an opportunity for the kingdom of God. Lord, you didn't send it, but you'll use it because you're faithful and you're able. And Lord, we declare a finest hour for the church that you will be lifted high. And when you are lifted up, you will draw all men to yourself. And God, we just don't, we're not just praying for our nation. God, we thank you that the nations would turn to you and see the hope of who you are. Lord, we just declare right now, those that are sick, we just send the word of healing. We send the word of healing. Disease, stop. Wholeness and completeness. We bind it. Thank you that what's bound in heaven is bound on earth. And we stand in the gap. As Moses and Aaron and we worship and we pray as believers and we thank you that this plague, this sickness will cease in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name come on let's declare the victory in Jesus name amen amen you can be seated for just a moment we wanted to, to update you with some details as, uh, as we move forward um, in light of uh, Governor Kemp and the information that's coming out, we've made a, a few changes from what we made on, on Friday. Uh, what we are gonna do is moving forward next Sunday, we're gonna provide an online uh, service for you to connect and worship um, as an option. Uh, and it'll be one service at 1030. Everybody say 1030. All right, so if you're an early service person, then you can sleep late. If you're a late service person, you can get there early. Um, but then it'll be online and we're actually moving, uh, got some things working in place to get worship online. And, and so we're so excited about, uh, about that. Um, but we're also, uh, for, we just feel like this isn't a, a time of either or. Um, we're also gonna be here. So we encourage you stay at home, especially if you're at risk. Uh, but even if it's Amy and I and Emma and Timothy, we're, we're gonna be here because we believe this is a time uh, that there needs to be the opportunity that if you feel comfortable, and that if the Holy Spirit is stirring inside of you and saying, get your rear into church, that, that uh, it, like he is us, and that's, that's, what, that's what he's saying to us is, hey, if, if we can be there, let's, let's be there, let's gather, and uh, we're gonna still clean and be safe and, and do all that, um, but that's the plan for next Sunday. And, uh, and again, yes, yeah, so we will gather at 1030 too, so, uh, and that one doesn't replay, so you gotta make sure if you're here in person, yeah, get here at 1030, but then there's also the online um, option as well. And then uh, as far as other large gatherings this week, uh, all of those will, will pick up later on. So for instance, uh, one night for, uh, for high school and middle school that won't meet on Wednesday night. All connect groups that meet here at the church won't meet here, but we do encourage you if you're a connect group leader, if you wanna open up your home uh, or find a place that you guys can meet, some, somebody might wanna meet virtually and there's some pretty cool things with Zoom and things like that. Um, so, so look, church is not canceled. 
because the church is not a place. The church is, we are the church. And so we just got to figure out in this time how to maybe gather differently and how that looks. And then uh, don't not connect. Connection isn't canceled. Uh, we still connect and we still gather together in that way. And so we encourage you uh, to, to do that. And then finally, we are staying up to date. Uh, we have some uh, uh, great church members who are, work with the CDC. We have some great connections in our community that are being a great resource to us so that we can stay up to date and uh, so that we can lead you well, that we can pastor you well, and uh, that we can hear from God and hear from them and make sound decisions moving forward. So we'll keep you updated right now. It's not a several week thing. It's, hey, this is what we're doing this week. And so 1030, that's what's happening that week. All the other gatherings are, uh, are postponed until later notice. And then Amy's got some more information for you regarding that. Yeah, so if you do want to connect online instead of coming in person next Sunday at 1030, then you can do that by going to mylifegate.church backslash online, and you'll find all of the resources there. There's actually going to be a few more going up this week, but um, you will be able to not only see the message, but we'll have a, a worship service streamed for you as well, and we will have kids services available for your kids to watch. So if you do feel like the best thing for your family is to stay at home, then we want to make sure your family is well resourced for that. And you can get all of that at mylifegate.church backslash online. And again, if you want to meet, we'll be here at 1030 on Sunday. Now, you can also stay up to date with what's happening at the church through our social media pages. That's at mylgc and all of those. Uh, or you can download our LifeGate Church app. That's a great resource. And you can continue to be tithers and givers during this time. Every time you give, it enables us to actually serve our community. You can do that. Uh, you can do it here in person, or you can do it on our website or through our app as well. And we're going to keep you updated on serve opportunities. For instance, when you came in today, I'm sure you saw the table full of food out there. We're not hoarding food for ourselves for the week. We are actually going to help, um, we're going to help some local families. When schools are canceled, a lot of those families depend on the school for lunch, for breakfast, and sometimes even dinner. And so we wanted to make sure that no kid in our area went hungry. And we put out the call to you guys on Friday, and you have answered big time. And so today, we're going to be able to meet at 1.30. If you'd like to come back, we're going to have a packing party to get all of those supplies into the bags for people to come and pick up so that their kids will not be hungry this week. So LifeGate, thank you for answering that, for feeding kids in our area. Give yourselves a hand. And there's going to be a lot more serve opportunities that come out of this, so we will make sure that you know all about that as they come available. We just wanted to say thank you for your heart for this community, for your heart for what God wants to do through this. We fully believe that what the enemy meant for harm, God is going to turn around and do something miraculous for this. I, I mean, I believe in a couple of weeks we're going to be standing here saying that this thing has been eradicated and, and it's, the doctors are going to be, how did that happen? But we're going to know because our God is miraculous and that's what he does. So thank you for being a part of the church. All right, you can stand up. So greeting looks a little bit different today. And uh, so you're going to wave or you're going to elbow bump or something like that. And uh, do no full body hugs, please, you know, any of that stuff. Uh, but uh, going to give you an opportunity. Hey, if you're in middle school, 6th, 7th, or 8th grade, you can head to Revolve, and there are a meeting in there, and uh, you're going to have a great time. Come on, wave at somebody and say, tell them this. Tell them, give them a message. Tell them, say yes. Say yes. Come on, wave at them and tell them, say yes. Well, I want to uh, talk to you today about saying yes and uh, who we're saying yes to, what we're saying yes about, and how important your, your yes is. There was a, uh, growing up in, in uh, kids' church and in, in uh, youth group, Amy and I grew up in church together, and she broke my heart three times during that time, and that doesn't have anything to do with the message, but um, just some information for you to feel sorry for me. Uh, but but uh, during that time... This is a say yes message, and you said no. You said no. You, okay, so, yeah. But uh, uh, th there was a, a, a verse sometimes that was taught, and, and, and I, I don't remember if I read it the first time or heard it taught, and I just, I didn't under, understand it. 
And it, and it kind of bothered me and it kind of stirred something inside of me. And I hope today it does the same for you. But I want to help you learn what I didn't know at the time was the context of it. And, and it's this very small verse that says that many are called, but few are chosen. Yeah, some of you already know. You can help me finish it. Many are called, but few are chosen. And, and it bugged me because I wanted to be a chosen one. Like, how do I get chosen? I don't want to just be a called one. I want to be a chosen one. God, God, what does that look like? And what my, I wasn't the person that, that when you picked kickball teams, you know, you kind of hid in the back so that you weren't picked. I, I was the one that kind of jumped up front and said, you better pick me. If you want to win, you pick me. Now, that's arrogance, you know, and no, not at all. And pride comes before the fall. There was some message last week I heard about that, and I, I'm still having, you know, digesting it. Hopefully you are too. But, but it, I wasn't, you know, hide, hide away from it. I, so I don't know if the whole thing with God, this, this thing, this exchange with him was, was God, I want to be chosen because I want to honor you, or more was it more of I want to be seen as a chosen one? You know, I want to be seen as one you picked and one, but, but eventually uh, some humility came and now I'm the most humble person I know. And, and so there's this, this development that's happened where I, I really learned the context of what, what the Lord was saying and really the story of what, what Jesus was saying, that, that many are called, many are invited to the party, but there are only some that come. There are some that get distracted. There are, there are some that, that hear the call to other things and, and then there are others that, that accept the invitation and they show up for the event. They show up for the party. But regardless of, of called and chosen, we're going to get there in just a minute. I, I want you to know that there's this thing that all of us in the room share in common. Whether, whether you have pastor in front of your name or evangelist or what we consider the fivefold ministry that, that is Jesus' gifts to the church, whether, whether you work for ministry or whether you don't, most of you in the, in the room don't, but do you know that every single one of you are called and you have a ministry? Every single one of us, if you are sucking wind, you have a calling on your life because everyone is called. A few things I want you to remember today, and you might want to jot these down. The first one is this. Everyone is called to be used by God in some way. Every single one of us are called to be used by God in some way. Now, it's the same calling, but it might look different. It may be expressed in different ways and in different seasons of your life. It, it may look a little bit different. It takes different shapes. But the fact of the matter is you're still called. When, when, when you are married, you're called. When you go through a divorce, you're still called. Whoa, whoa hold on a second. No, no, no. You're, you're still called. There's still a destiny and a purpose on your life. God doesn't give up on you. We give up on him. We, we remove ourselves from the situation. We might remove ourselves from being used, but, but no matter where you are in the season of life, you go up and down. It, you, you were called when you didn't have kids. You're called when you had six. When you have seven, it's kind of questionable. But, but when you have, you're called, but you're crazy. No, no. You, you're, still, you're still called. When you're retired, you're called. When you work full time, you're called. When you're a stay-at-home mom, you're called. When you're black, you're called. When you're white, you're called. When you, when you work for a church, you're called. When you stay at home, you're called. When you're a homeschooler, you're called. When you go to public school, you're called. We are all called by God. You go, Michael, that's just, it just seems a little repetitive. It's like, but, but that is something that's got to get down in our hearts that we recognize every single day we're called. There is a greater purpose and a destiny. There is a reason you exist, and you've been, you've been called by mighty God. It's not, it's not your parents called, grandparents called, pastor called. You are called by the most high God. He has sent out an invitation for you and for me. You go, I don't really know yet. Here's the context of the story. Many are called, few are chosen. In Matthew, the end of Matthew, Jesus tells this story about the kingdom of God, and he talks about a master or a king that sends out an invitation. He sends out the invitation to a select group of people, and he says, hey, you are invited to the party. So I just want you to imagine in your inbox, you get an evite, and it's, it's hey, the king has invited you to the party, and there's this maybe, uh, yes, no, rejected, I hate you, don't ever text me. No, I'm just kidding. That's not, that's not options in there, I don't think. Maybe rejected is, I don't 
but but you you maybe y'all you know what I'm talking about the maybe one normally I do the maybe uh, at our house. I press maybe because Amy's the one, she's the one that knows, okay, can we do this? Guys, is there anybody in the room as a guy, you have said yes, but you didn't check with your wife first? Okay, good. There's six guys are honest, and the rest of you? Yeah, just, did you check? And you ever had that conversation? Did you check with me? And you're like, no, I'm a man. I made my own decision. You know? <laughs> yeah, and now our house is chaos. But, but it's one of those. The invitation went out, and some people said maybe. Some people sent back a reply, no, I'm busy. Some people heard a call from somewhere else because they accepted a number, another invitation. They were busy. They were caught up with something. Here's, here's what happens with that. It's not that what you were invited to is unimportant. It just means something else is more important every single time. Do you realize people are where they want to be? and you do what you want to do. You make a choice. Well, I just couldn't help it. Most of the time, that's not true. You could have helped it. You could make the decision. Now, if I invite you to a party and you say no, I'm going to trust that I'm not important and that you had something else better to do, and that's what you communicated by saying maybe or no. But I'm kidding. But a lot of times, it's that simple. And I'm not talking about inviting. I'm talking about this is the king that has invited a group of people, and then they, they report back to him and they say, listen, a lot of people are, are declining and they, they can't do that. And, 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 and the king didn't say, well, I'll, I'll, I'll find a better date. No, it actually, it made him mad. It, it frustrated. He goes, how can they not come? I've prepared all this food and I've prepared this. I mean, I've got, sweet, I've got what is it, Swedish mis, uh, meatballs? I mean, you know, if there's Swedish meatballs, if there's the little pigs in a blanket with dipping sauces, come on, I mean, it's a special event. He brought out the best, and, and they didn't show up. They, they were too busy. And then he says, okay, well, I'm just going to invite everybody. Go through the, to the highways, the byways. That's a fancy way of saying everywhere. And he, he, he made it a whosoever. Who, if you will come, come. So how, how many people were invited to the party? Everyone. Everyone was included. And then and then still, there were a few that came. And so the end of the story is many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, few are chosen. Then there's an Old Testament uh, story about Elisha. Elisha was um, uh, uh, the prophet at the time. Uh, prophets were messengers of God. They were the voice of God in the time of Israel in the Old Testament and, and used very powerfully, has a lot of miraculous things that happened through his life. But Elisha started a school of prophets. It wasn't good enough just to to end with him, he created a school where he, were, he was teaching others how to be prophetic. And, and there's this, uh, this story. I, I want to read some details of it. 2 Kings 9, it's just a few verses. It says, Now Elisha the prophet called one of the sons of the prophets and said to him, Gird up your loins. Now, that does not mean tie up your pork loin before you put it on the smoker. That's not gird up your loins. He, he says prepare for action. Basically what that means is they would, I just want you to picture a Jedi, you know, with the robe, the brown robe, and maybe a lightsaber. Okay, so it's, it's y'all gonna have to lighten up if we're gonna get through this Jehu story, okay? So, so he, he's this, he has this robe, and, and he says gird up your loins. And basically they would take up the robe, and he would, they would stick it in their pants, and so it looked like he had a giant inner tube around him. I mean, pretty silly right? I mean, he's, and then he says, take off running, gird up your loins, prepare for action, take this flask of oil in your hand and go to Ramoth of Gilead. Then when you arrive there, look for Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat. So way beyond in the nineties, when you were calling somebody, that's fat. That's there. This is where it came from. It's biblical. Jehoshaphat, you fat baby. Okay. So Jehoshaphat, the son of, don't ever say that to anybody. All right. Uh, the son of Nimshi, which sounds like sushi, and go in and have him arise. Now, this is important. Have him arise from among his brothers. Another translation says companion, uh, companions, and take him into an inner room. So what did Jehu have to do? He had to arise and go into an inner room. He separated himself, very important word. He separated himself into an inner room, then take the flask of oil, pour it, pour it over his head, thus says the Lord. Now notice this, it wasn't the word of the prophet, it was the word of the Lord. 
and there was a separation that took place, then an anointing and an empowerment that took place, the word of the Lord could come forth because someone was set apart. Some people were waiting on God to speak, but they haven't set themselves apart. When you set yourself apart, then it opens up a place for the word of the Lord to come. And so this separation was so important, not just in that day, but it's important in our day because, because calling is not the question. Well, some are called, some are not. No, 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 everybody's called. Everybody's called. The invitation goes to everybody, but it's your yes that determines if you're chosen. It's your yes to God that moves you from just being someone that's called to being one that's chosen. And it's not one of those, yeah, it's not one of these maybes. It's not a halfway yes. It's one giant yes to God that says yes. And what does that yes do? I'm glad you asked. We're going to talk about it in just a minute. He says, then, he says, you will be, he says, that's the Lord, I've appointed, I've anointed you king over Israel. Then open the door and flee. Do not delay. And then he just said, hey, listen, get out of there. So here's this donut running away. So the donut came in, anointed oil, and then the donut ran away. And, and this very powerful, the, the, just the, the detail that is in here is, is so important for you and I when it comes from switching from a place of, okay, I'm just called to being walking in this chosen life with the Lord. See, God didn't just call you. God picked you and chose you for a very unique purpose. See, we can't play around with that. We can't downplay what God set apart, what God called but there was this response from, from Jehu. There's this response that is required. And so I want you to see it's my response to God's call that sets me apart. It's my, it's my response to God's call that sets me apart. See, when you are set apart, you don't have to tell people they already know. When you're anointed, you don't have to tell people I'm anointed. I am Michael the anointed. How weird is that? That's like I'm Gandalf the Great. I'm, I'm the, the, no, 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 it's, no, it, it, it's, it's seen, it's experienced on you. You ever met people that when they walk in the room, the atmosphere changes? It's like, man, there's just something, wow, they carry something on. That's, that's what happens in this, okay, I'm called and chosen. It, it kind of looks like this on, uh, there, there is, there's several things I hate. There's one thing that I hate, and I think some of you will be there with me. I hate moving. Anybody hate moving? I mean, come on, it's terrible. Let's just complain for a second. Spirit of complaining, come. Oh, I say, watch this. I, I hate packing. I hate figuring out sometimes where we're going to move, if it's an interim plan. We, we went through all this about a year ago, and, and baby, it was bad. I mean, it was just that, that whole moving process. It was like, no, we're, but we're, it's good. And it's, no, it's bad. I mean, there's nothing. You just try to encourage yourself, and it, it's just terrible. And, and, and worse than moving is helping somebody else move. Don't judge me because most of you feel the same exact way. You would rather give somebody a 20 or a 50 than give up your whole Saturday for a slice of pizza. <laughs> like that works when getting teenagers to come to youth group, give them a t-shirt, pizza, and basketball. But when it comes to come give your whole Saturday to slam your knuckles into the side of things and to, you know, not break your china and break your, I mean, you know what I'm saying? And then, and then it's like, okay, it's pizza time, but you got to finish the room before the pizza and there's nothing like cold pizza. And then there's soda, but there's no ice. Y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? Warm soda. And then it's pizza. Don't even let me, I mean, and then it's uh, Pepsi. Don't even let me get started on that. And so, you know, just all these breakdowns in this thing. But, but here's the thing. So I hate moving and I hate, so listen, don't ask me to help you move. It actually happened one time. Because I'm going to tell you about that in just a second. Moving is a test of friendship. You kind of know where you're at with people. Like you could, get, listen, you could have been through wars together. But when you ask, will you help me move? Your response to that determines your level of friendship. Like where are you really, where that, you, listen, you may be their kid's godparents, but when you ask to move, it, cha it changes everything. And, and, and it's really, it's, it's tough because you don't know how to respond sometimes. It's like, oh. Uh, 
and then you don't know whether, okay, should I make a plan? Okay, I'm good till 12, and then Amy's going to call me because i got to get out, and i got another engagement, and then you've timed it, you know, where, where you can be, and where, you know what I'm saying? Or, so, or, and, and, or you're like, ah, oh, you know, yeah, yeah, that's when we say, oh, let me check with my wife. I need to check with her. You know, I need to make sure I run it by her. Whatever, you know, you don't want to do it. And, and you just don't want to say, no, man, I'm really sorry. I don't want to do that. It's a true test of, of friendship. We actually had somebody, they asked us, and it was, pub, it was in public, and there were other people around, and this was terrible that I, that I did this, and, and I repent, and I'm going to repent again in just a minute. Um, and I feel really bad for it, but the person asked Amy and I, hey, we're moving next weekend. Can you help? And his, this, is what I, this is what I said. Um, so don't you have some friends that you can, <laughs> you can ask this? You ask friends, and, and, I, and it didn't, and Amy's like, y'all know, guys, y'all know when your wife is giving you the, like, I could feel it. It was like, zzz, zzz, and I felt very small because I was acting very small. I mean, that was a really dumb thing to think and say, and, and I just couldn't, blah, 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 the words came out, and it was like toothpaste. I couldn't get it back in the tube, and I was like, I really didn't mean to say that, and we are friends, and, uh, uh, but I just stood there and looked stupid, and, 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 and sounded that way and said, well, don't you have friends? And I didn't even realize that they were asking because they did, because we were friends. We thought we were friends, and then the relationship was awkward ever since. So, uh, you know, but, but, but here's, here's what happens. I, I, I want to show you this, and, it, and it's just, to me, it just helps set this up perfectly. So if this group right here, and some of them are family, and so you guys are, have to pretend we're just friends, uh, but, but there's this circle of these are my friends, and I am moving, and this is just pretend. I know all of you would say yes, but don't. And so there's pizza, okay, and, and ice with Coke products, okay? So I, I'm, I'm giving you the end. So, hey, we're moving. Will you help me? Amy and I really need your help for this. And all of you are looking. And, you know, some of you can't even make eye contact. You know when somebody can't make eye contact, they look away. There's something happening right there. It's okay. And, and so most of you look away, but this guy right here, he raises his hand. I just want you to raise your hand. So you know who I'm going to pick? I invited all of them. But the one that I'm going to pick is that guy right there. My eyes are on him because he raised his hand and you are in like Flynn and we are gonna do this and we're gonna move our stuff and it's gonna happen and we're gonna have pizza and it's gonna be a party and, it's, and we're happening. Why, why did I pick him? Because he said yes. See, your, your yes to God is what gets you chosen. You're already called. He puts out the call to everybody. The one who gets chosen is not the one that God picks out. It's the one that responds back to God. Yes, I'll go. Yes, I'll be used by you. Yes, so here's the deal. The king of the universe is moving. And he sent out an invitation for all of us to participate in his move. And we can sing songs, there is a move all we want, or we can say we are the move because we are chosen and we're giving God our giant yes. So now I'm not just not called, I'm stepping in to this chosen status. And First Peter, I love this paraphrase, or excuse me, this is a translation, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the passion, uh, this is for you, Kale, because we're ordaining Kale in just a minute because he's got a giant yes on his life. And, and so today, I forgot to tell you in the first service, but I, I had to make sure there was a verse in the passion translation for you. This is an honor of you. But look at this, it says, you are chosen treasure, priest who are kings, a spiritual nation. Come on, that just makes you go, huh. Set apart is God's devoted ones. He called you out of darkness to experience his marvelous light. And now he claims you as his very own. I just want you to think about that. The, the beauty of that, that the king of the universe claims you as his very own. Woo! You and your bad self loves you, claims you, calls you his own. And he did this so that you would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. John 15, Jesus says, guys, listen, you didn't choose me. I chose you 
And I appointed you to be used by me. I appointed you for a reason. See, we're not just called or we're not just appointed or just anointed. There is a purpose and a reason for it. Jesus was anointed with the, with the Holy Spirit and with power to what? To go about healing all, delivering all, setting the captives free. He didn't just come to be Jesus. He came for Jesus and the Word of God to be manifested. And this is actually, there, there was an action or a purpose to what he was doing. He didn't just come to exist, he came to do something and he's created you and I, not just to receive a calling, but to walk being chosen. And what is this chosen? And what is this, many are called for your children, but if, but if I'm chosen, what am I, I choose, what am I choosing? And I wanna break that down very quickly. There's three words I want you to remember. The first one is holiness. The second one is relationship. And the third one is obedience. Holiness, relationship, and obedience. Holiness, there's all kinds of words for this. It's set apart, it's consecrate, sanctification. There's some spiritual words, but basically all of those mean, simply mean to set apart, ordain. One of the, the words that we use for what's about to happen with Kill and Madison and Kyler is the, the family, they're being set apart for the work of the ministry. It's, it's the, the calling and walking in that chosen. It's a giant yes to God. And, and sometimes holiness is a scary word because we've made it more about our no's than our yes. Okay, can I tell you, biblically, holiness is not a bunch of no's. Holiness is one giant yes to God. In, in a marriage relationship with, with, with me and Amy, I don't have to go around and say, no, don't look at that woman. No, don't talk to that woman. No, don't have an affair. No, don't do this. No, don't do that. No, do that. that can you imagine? That'd be a crazy life. Right? I mean, yes, that, that would be a crazy life. Where it's not a life of don't. I've said a giant yes to her, and it says my nose for me. You see that? And so sometimes we get trapped between calling and chosen place with God, and we can't step over into holiness because we're going around, well, don't do this, and don't look at that, and don't do this. And, and listen, I'm not saying be dumb. You know, well, I could just go hang out everywhere I want, and I just... That won't bother me. I'm not saying that. I'm saying we say a giant yes to the Lord, and it's not just this halfway yes. It's one of these, these giant yes that you say, I choose no other. I choose you. I commit myself to your call and to your purpose. I have no other purpose. I can't exist without you. You are the air that I breathe. You go, well, that sounds desperate, because we are desperately in love with him, and we are desperate for him, and we can't exist without him. And the reason we can't walk in holiness is because we have other things that that we, that we just can't do without. And we, we're okay with Jesus being part of the equation, but we've got some other things that we've said yes to. And the power of setting yourself apart. Jehu had to get up from his companions and he set himself apart to the Lord. And while it's a position of the heart, it's a position of the heart, but it flows into other areas of our life. And, and all of a sudden there's things that you don't do that you, that you used to do. And it's not because it's a don't or a do, it's, it's more because of who you've chosen, because of who you're in love with. And it looks different and, and you begin to count the cost. And then there's a lot in the Bible about that. There's a series waiting to be, okay, what does it look like to count the cost? But, but you recognize that man being set apart, the King setting us apart for him is the greatest honor and the greatest thing. And, and I love this. He said, be holy as I am holy. It's actually a command from Jesus to be holy. That doesn't mean work your tail off to be good. That simply means to be who, anything, anytime the Bible says be this, it's because it's in your dinner. It's in your DNA. That's dinner. It is in your DNA to be holy. It's in your DNA to walk righteously with your God. It's in your DNA. Already, it's, you're already designed. He didn't say do holiness. He said, be holy as I am holy, which connects us to the next so important thing, relationship. Sometimes we get stuck between called and chosen because we don't realize that there's a giant yes coming from Jesus to you and me. You know, when we're tempted and, and we have struggles or go through a challenging season, we've distanced ourselves from the yes that God has placed over our life. And I just wanna remind you today, I don't know where you're at with this, but I wanna remind you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords has said yes, 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 
yes to you. His promises are yes. And remember, our response is amen. This relationship, it's intimacy. Jehu, it says he got up and he didn't just start the whole process of oil and anointing. He says he got up and he went to an inner room. And for every single one of us in the room, I, I'm so glad that there's the global church and I'm so glad there's the global body of Christ. And I'm, but I'm so glad that Jesus sees the one. I'm so glad that, that their calling and the chosen place that he has on my life is there's this inner room. There's this place between me and Jesus. See, he doesn't have grandchildren. He doesn't have stepchildren. You're not, you're not uh, chosen because you're in the room. You're not chosen because of what you do. You're chosen because of who you are and because of who he is. And he's chosen you to be his, to be in relationship with him. So I, I want to encourage you today. If you're, if you're feeling distant, if you're feeling distracted, if you're feeling, I uh, mean, there's just some temptations that just feel like, uh, man, I'm just really strong. I keep butting my head against this and I, I don't want to do this. Then there's a breakdown in relationship. And so encounter him. When you encounter him and you fall more in love with him, guess what? I turn my eyes on Jesus and everything else begins to grow strangely dim in the light of his grace. The light of his beauty and grace. And I think John 15 is another place where he says, abide in me. Basically, that means hang out with me. Find your life in me. Abide in me and me abide in you. But I think sometimes we can get so caught up. Jesus said to focus on me dwelling in you, not your abiding in him. Now, I want you to think about that just for a second. Sometimes the distance is what gets distracting and we get so focused on I feel away from God instead of inviting him to come close. Instead of stopping right in your track and recognize man, you are called and you are chosen. And, 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 and it, but, 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 and our, our butts get so big sometimes. And he's just, but, 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 but. And Jesus is going, Michael, get your butt out of the way. Get, the, get the, all the buts and the excuses. Don't say no to the invitation because there was an excuse. You couldn't show up because you didn't know what to wear. You couldn't show up because you were busy. You weren't show up because you were helping somebody move. That's a little funny put in there. Don't let, don't let you be the excuse that you didn't show up. And then finally, obedience. And come on, this is quick obedience. Reluctant or slow obedience is disobedience. And how can we not say yes? Come on, he is so good. How can we not say, I'm coming to your party. I, 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 listen, I, thank you, you have picked me and called me out and now you're in relationship with me. You've made me holy. I could never be in, I could never get to that place on my own. I could never separate my, myself on my own. It's you who makes me holy. You've changed my DNA and who I am. And now I come thankfully and gratefully before you. And Jesus uses the same, the same topic. He says, if you love me, you'll obey me. If you obey me, you'll love me. Here's where I got caught up in it as a teenager. I went, I just sinned. I don't love God because I didn't obey him. But what Jesus is teaching us is your love and your obedience is connected together. You can't obey without love. And you can't love without obedience. They lean and depend on each other. And so if there's a place right now you're disobeying, or maybe you've said, hey, I know that I'm, 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 I'm just not ready to choose him right now. Man, choose quick obedience. It's always the best thing. We don't have time to linger around and wait and decide if we want to obey. Time is of the essence. And time is the only thing that we don't get back. I want you to think about the way some of you age up as a parent or somebody that you love and you care for. And you want so much for that child or a student or that person that you love to care for to reach their potential and to get everything that God has for them. We want that for them. Sometimes I, I want to jump inside my kids and just make all the decisions for them. Any enabling parents like that, sometimes you just, if you just feel like you could just make it for them. But really, if they'll, if they'll just draw close to you and walk in relationship with you, they'll learn their way. They're going to hit some bumps. They're going to make some decisions. They're going to make some choices that aren't their best, but the potential is still inside of them. The calling is still inside of them. You just want to help them recognize they're not just called, they're chosen. 
that they've got a destiny and a purpose. And that's how good your father is. That's how loving our heavenly father is. That no matter where you are in the spectrum, some of you are are walking out your ministry and your calling and your purpose and you're feeling this significance. Some of you have let it go. Some of you are so distracted in in disobedience and, and kind of dabbling in some other yeses that you've said. And today is a day we say a giant yes to God where we get up and we we separate ourselves from our other companions and we get to the inner room just between us and the Lord. And we look at, when we look at his face, I want you to think about this. When we look at his face, there's no way we can say no. He's that good. And it's not just that he deserves our yes, because he does. But when you get intimate and personal in the inner room with Jesus, you can't say no. And today I want to encourage you, let's say yes. Let's say yes. And I, I, I thought, man, what more fitting of a day than a young man in a family that is saying yes to being our next gen pastors. And I am so proud and so thankful for Kale Van Dyke today and uh, Madison and Kyler and so excited. Did you get gifts? There's presents, dude, on the front row. This is awesome. This is, oh, Kyler got presents for Ordinary. Okay, so um, but just a special day, and his family is here. So we're going to transition uh, to that, and then we're going to uh, take some time at the end and just worship and respond. Uh, but I, I, I want to encourage you today with, um, with what's about to happen and just let you know we wanted this to be not just about Kale and his family, but this is a LifeGate thing. Uh, we're going to even greater places as a local church and a ministry. Um, Kale, today we are ordaining Kale as our next-gen pastor. Yeah. So we're going to take him off to an inner room and we're going to break out the oil and we're going to talk. No, um, we, uh, but, but here's what's so special ab- about uh, Kale. Kale is a son of this house. He, he, is, he was a part of Next Gen. He's always been taller than me, even when he was, you know, eight. But, uh, but he, is, uh, he is not just house called, you know, LifeGate called or Michael and Amy called or even... Gordon and Jackie called. He is God called. And today we are simply recognizing what he has already done in his heart and setting himself apart. He heard a call from a Jehu call of, hey, set yourself apart and get in this room, get with the Lord. And, uh, and now today we're publicly acknowledging that. And, and while some responsibility has changed and he's taking on more, he has already been shepherding, feeding and leading and taking great care of the next generation. And for some of you, that might be kind of a different language. And you're like, okay, what, what was, and you might be new to LifeGate. And I just want to explain that just a little bit and help you know the significance of it. It's not just a fancy way of saying youth pastor or, or kids pastor. Uh, Kale now will step into a place where he oversees and shepherds over birth through high school. And, and it gives this unique, uh, it's a unique calling, but it gives this uh, perspective and strategy to look and say, okay, at every phase of life, not just department, but how, how at every phase of life are we helping make sure a kid, as they transition from this place to this place, they're being empowered with everything they need to walk out God's purpose and destiny for their life. And what's so cool is he's got to experience that. I mean, growing, growing up here, and now it looks a little bit different, and, and, it's, and it's changed and taken shapes. But we are so excited about what this is going to look like for not just him personally, but also for us as a church and what it means for your kids. Mom and dad, grandparents, guardians, I'm just telling you, there's, there's ministry is going to another level. I'm not just talking about programs. I'm talking about what's going to happen in the life of your kids spiritually because of this covering and what's being set in place. And so while today a name is shifting and a change and a title is being given, but this is so much more than that. Spiritually, we're crossing a threshold today and we're going to a greater place and there's gonna be an anointing and a a mantle that, that is coming on you today for what God has and what's next. And I am so, it is such an honor that you're in this house, like that you came from this house and that God called you to be a part of this. And, uh, and I can't wait for all the other Kales and the other Madisons and that are going to be a part of what, just what God is doing. And so, uh, before they come, uh, we're going to call them and the family up in just a moment, but we have a a very uh, powerful message, sweet message from our founding pastors, pastors, Tony and Cheryl. And so they're going to be up on the screen, check out what they have to say. 
Good morning, LifeGate, and good morning, Kale and Madison. We're so proud of you. We're so honored to be a part of this day where you are saying officially, yes, we have decided to give our lives to the call of ministry. You know, from the beginning of LifeGate, part of our mission has been to reach the next generation and to watch you guys grow up and become part of that and to see that happen. It's such a rewarding thing for us as pastors and for us as a church. And Kel, your love from the time you were just a young boy, your love for all things of God, your love for people, the word, worship, it's just been evident upon your life that this really is what God's called you to do. Yeah, and so we are very proud of you, Kale. This is a great day, not just for you and your family. This is a great day for LifeGate Church and for the kingdom of God. Way to go. All right, come on up, guys. Family, and uh, we got some elders that are coming up to surround them. We just want to encourage you as the church, uh, here's a way for you to participate in this. Is in the Bible, they would stretch out the right hand, and it was a sign of covenant. It was a sign of agreement. It was your giant yes to what is happening. And uh, so I'm just going to encourage you as we pray and lay hands. I'm just telling you, I ain't laying my elbow on you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay my hands on you. They're washed and sanitized. And, uh, and we're going to pray and just declare, and God's going to do something really special in this moment. And uh, so I just want to encourage you out there, just stretch out. If you're watching online, go ahead, stretch out your hand. You're just as much a part of this. And so join us as uh, we just declare this over them. Father, we just come right now. And Lord, we're so thankful for Kel and Madison and this household. Thank you for Kyler. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done all the way for preparing them for this time in this season. All the details, all the, the conversations, all the moments, uh, even the, the, the silent moments, Lord, you've heard the desire of his heart. And Lord, I thank you uh, for uh, not just an invitation uh, to, to come, not just a call, but God, I thank you for the giant yes that's over this family and over this house. And Lord, today, we thank you. We just come alongside Kel and Madison and Lord, we thank you for the setting apart for the ministry uh, to, uh, to students. Lord, we just thank you for the destiny that's on so many of their lives. And God, we thank you that you are giving him the unique ability, the fivefold ministry uh, to flow through him and in him. God, we just thank you that everything is being taken to a whole nother level. We thank you for an increase in, uh, in authority spiritually and in thor- uh, increased influence and authority with people. And Lord, we're expecting and we're excited And God, I thank you for the Jehu that's a part of this house that is setting himself apart for the work and what you're doing. And then, Lord, we thank you for the nation that'll turn. We thank you for the next generation, your purpose, your destiny, your plan. We declare that it's the next generation's finest hour, that the lost and the hurting will be drawn. And Lord, thank you for a pastor today that is stepping in place to take care of them, to lead them, to feed them. And Lord, we just thank you right now that both of them as a house, that they're trusting in the Lord, that they're not leaning on their own understanding, but in all of their ways, they're acknowledging you. And God, you are directing their path. You're making it straight. You're making it influential. And the kingdom today is being extended. And we declare the best is yet to come. And we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, thank you so much. I'm not going to cry this service. I got all that out last service, I think. So hopefully... Um, but man, just thank you all so much just for believing in me and for allowing me, especially you kids and, and parents and next gen team members. I'm just so honored to get to do ministry at such an amazing place, um, such as LifeGate. So just thank you all. And I just want to, uh, thank a few people individually. Uh, first of all, thank you to my mom and dad who at all times growing up, Jesus was at the center of our home. And that's, I mean, that's what creates people. You know, I'm not to puff myself up, but like that's what creates people in ministry is they they have a good foundation. And I I just had the best in my parents. So thank you guys. And then just to my amazing, beautiful wife, Madison, I I wouldn't be here without her. And um, just seeing the journey that God's brought us on has just been so incredible. And then of course, to our pastors, you know, good pastors, they see things in you before you ever see it in yourself. And uh, I, I don't know that I ever really saw myself getting to this place, but God did and they did. 
And I'm just so honored that through their leadership and through their uh, just trusting and believing in me, giving me opportunities, has brought me here today. So I'm just so excited. The best is yet to come, and I just can't wait to see what God has in store for LifeGate Next Gen. So thank you all. Well, Kel, you may not have cried both services, but I did now, so thank you for that. Hey, this is your official certificate of ordination here. I can't open it because I don't have enough hands, but it's really nice in there. You can hang it on your wall right next to his certificate from, um, is it a Church of God School? Church of God School of Ministry for his associates in pastoral care. So that was incredible there. And then we have here for you what every next-gen pastor needs, a fanny pack. And it is filled with all kinds of things to help you be the best possible next-gen pastor. We have antibacterial badges, uh, also known as Band-Aids, but this is the off-brand, so that's why it says that. Uh, We have crayons, so you can always help foster their creativity. We have tissues because kids get snotty. Uh, And, oh, this one, we packed this a while ago, you guys, but we didn't realize how valuable this one was going to be. Here's some uh, hand sanitizer. It's probably 90% glitter, so I don't know how effective it'll be, but... Just You may need somebody to help you guard that on the way out the door. And then uh, every next-gen pastor needs vials of glitter at all times because glitter just makes everything better. Just don't use it in the church, please. And then lastly, we have a tube of Boudreaux's butt paste for you because kids get diaper rash and you always need to be prepared. So when you guys see Pastor Kale walking around with his fanny pack, you know that is a prepared next-gen pastor. You guys, let's give him another giant hand. Amen. Way to go. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you can be seated for just a moment, and uh, if you'll just bow your heads and close your eyes, I just want to give you the opportunity today to, to say yes to Jesus, yes to a personal relationship with Him. Maybe you've never prayed that prayer. You've never committed your life to him. And, and maybe if you were to die right now, you don't know if you'd go to heaven. There's some uncertainty about where you would spend eternity. Maybe you've prayed a prayer before, but you feel away from God. Whether you're in the room or you're watching online, we want to give you the opportunity to meet Jesus and make him your personal savior for you to not just be called, but to choose him as your Lord today. We're not going to embarrass you or call you out, but But if that's you and you say, Michael, I I need that prayer. I want you to pray with me. You might just want to lift your hand or make eye contact with me and say, Michael, that's me. Pray with me today. I want to know Jesus. I want to make him the Lord of my life. Ready to surrender to him. Ready to say yes. I'm going to give you some words to pray. And this is just between you and the Lord. And you might want to pray this prayer or your own words in your heart. We're going to commit our lives to Jesus. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for loving me. Thank you so much for Save me. Thank you for sending Jesus. And Jesus, today, I, I call on you to be the Lord of my life. I believe that you came and you died on the cross. On the third day, you rose again. And you are alive and well, seated in heaven. And you've made a place for me that, that when I breathe my last breath here, I'll see you face to face. Thank you for that. Thank you for a destiny and eternity in heaven. And then, Lord, I thank you for a purpose that I'm here. This is why I'm here, is to be in relationship with you. And so today, I just say yes to you. Thank you for loving me so much. Thank you for calling me, and thank you for choosing me. Today, I choose you. I love you, Jesus. Thank you so much for loving me. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Come on, let's give a hand to those that made that decision. Yep. Hey, for our family in the room with us today, you guys can go ahead and stand up as we get ready for response time. And for our online family, if you made that decision today, we are so excited for you to know everything that that means to help you walk that out. So be sure that the team's going to post the link there that you can click on uh, to mylifegate.church backslash new believer and go find out all that that means. We would love to help you walk this thing out. And you can be a tither and a giver online today as well. Thank you so much, online family, for joining us. We'll see you next Sunday at 1030. Hey, for all of you in the room, let's get ready for response time. Yeah, the altars are open and and the prayer team's